Due to strong language and sexual content, viewer discretion is advised. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. You are a man, I'd smash you in the ground right now. A wife accused. Mike is convinced that I've cheated on him. You had her take a polygraph. The results showed she passed it, but I knew she flunked one of the questions. A husband obsessed. I have spied on her, audio taped her. Where's the audio tape? I gave it to your company. CBS Security remembers you very specifically and say he gave us nothing. The anger has been building. I have blamed myself all my life for your problems. Today. It ain't gonna happen no more. It explodes. Why did my son come to me and ask me if I'm going to kill you? You drug this kid into this. You drug this kid into this, and he had to hear all that. Don't okay, respond to that. You can try and bully her, but you ain't going to do it with me here. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Ready, free. Take. I'm going to get you the help that you need. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Get out of our lives. We want you gone. We're tired of the turmoil. Get out of here. Get out. We want you gone. Mom, get out! Well, imagine being ganged up on like this by your husband and your 12-year-old son. That's right. I said 12-year-old son, because if you caught it at the end, it was, Mom, get out. Cindy says that's what was happening to her on a regular basis, and she is at the end of her rope. Her husband, Mike, constantly accuses her of lying and cheating. In fact, he is so convinced that she is unfaithful that last year he drove halfway across the country from St. Louis to CBS Studios in Hollywood to try to show me his proof, but he was turned away by security. <laughs> well, today he's back. This time, we let him in the gates because of the home video you are about to see. Take a look. Mike has always been a yell earner, screamer. I got the right to be angry, you son of a bitch. You're the only one that's ever made me angry. He's called me bitch, whore, skank, slut, liar, manipulator, all of that in front of my son. Two and a half years ago, Mike's abuse turned physical. When Mike gets mad, he turns violent. I'm I slapped Cindy one time after she had a butt at me in the nose. I have grabbed Cindy by the neck and just wanted to shake the truth out of her. So I spit in her face one day because I just wanted to hit her like a man. I wanted to create pain for her. I, I wanted to so bad it wasn't even funny. Turn that light on. What did I tell him? What did I tell him? When he's in that rage, it's very scary. I'm afraid he's going to hurt me. Cindy shouldn't be afraid of me. I believe a violent man would have would have hurt that woman. I'm not a violent man. Tell me that! Now, by the way, Mike is the one who recorded himself in a rage and wanted me to see it. He says his wife drives him completely mad. True? True. You, you tape that? Yes, sir. And you say she drives you crazy? Yes, sir. You seem agitated right now. I am. Just sitting across from her. What are you agitated about? I'm just agitated because this isn't the true me. This isn't the true me all my life, so my son didn't have to go through this as we did in our younger days when she accused me of sleeping around, meeting women because I worked in the public, the way she has bashed me to my family all these years and manipulated them into being another man that I am not. I walked out of the house when these situations come up all these years. But until I taped my wife two years ago on a tape and heard everything that was going on, all the lies and deceitment, you have lied to everybody in your life. I've never liked confrontation. But boy, I picked my battle this time and we're gonna deal with it for once and for all. What's that mean, we're gonna deal with it once and for all? I want my wife back. I want to get to the bottom of all of our problems all these years. Wow. You want your wife back? Yes, I do. Well, you, you're really charming her. <laughs> uh, 
This is the way it's got to go down. This is the way it's got to go down. I've tried to charm this woman. I've, she's never wanted it. You never wanted my love. <clears throat> I needed you to communicate with me and talk to me. Okay, let's talk no about communication. communication. I've been waiting for that one, okay? Let's talk about it. You can try and bully her later, but you ain't gonna do it with me here. That's fine. Tell me what your experience of this have been. I mean, he sends us a tape of him, in, in my sense, in an uncontrolled rage, yelling and screaming at you to get out. Then he comes here and says, I want her back. Do you want her out or do you want her back? You're telling her, get I out, get out, back. get out. I was we hate you, you no good son of a bitch, get out. Oh, I want her back. I poured my heart out to this woman outside of them tapes. Do you, do you want to be right or do you want the truth? I want the truth. Okay. This isn't about being right. This is about being healthy and giving my boy a good life. Yeah, well, if I'm going to talk about it, your boy in a minute. Okay. By the way, he's not hearing any of this. Right. And I think that his behavior is something we need to discuss. But I, I want to talk about what I consider questionable behavior on his part. And then you tell me what your experience of it uh, has been. Now, according to Cindy, you call Cindy bitch, whore, slut, skank, no good baby killer, manipulator, liar, and another word that we're not even allowed to say on television. I Is that. that true? Yes, that's true. Okay, so you're saying she's the problem here, but you're calling your wife the, the, the mother of your child, you're calling her those, these names. Does that make sense to you? No, it's anger. It's the anger I have in me all these years. Okay, so. well, you're a big boy. Exactly. I mean, come on. I we, we all get angry. <laughs> exactly. But you also can ratchet your mouth down, too. Uh, what do you, does he call you those things? Yes, he has. And, and what do you do? It hurts. I mean, it's, it destroys me when he calls me all these names, the person I love. You know, over something that didn't even happen. He says you're a bitch, whore, slut, skank. Is that true? No, sir. No, sir. I mean, I am are, not. are you that? Are you some street walker out here? Are, are you doing all of these things that he's ac accusing you of? No, sir. I'm then not. why are you accusing her of these things? These are words of anger. I know I control my own actions. I'm supposed to control them. I'm the man here. Okay? Well, you're big enough to say it. Be big enough to own it. Anger didn't say it. that. I Mike said that. I own it. I own it. Then it is I like, I own like it. anger made me do it. Oh, hell, you made, you made you do it. You chose to do it. You're calling your wife these names. Do, is that she what you think of her? She called herself in the beginning. Is that, I'm not talking to her. I'm talking to you. Okay. Why would you call your wife a slut and a whore? Because it was happening. You she believe that's out. true? Yeah, I know it's true. Okay, tell me how you know. I have an STD. You're starting to make me think that you're losing touch with no. reality. No. Here's I'm not. the note you provided yes. from your doctor. Yes, we sir. have this. You did not test positive for chlamydia, true or false? What STD did she give you? Chlamydia. She gave you chlamydia, and you yes. know that how? I got treated by a doctor. So you had chlamydia? No, I did not. Well, apparently you did. You gave it to him. I didn't have it. I went to the doctor two days later, the same one he went to, <clears> and I, po I tested negative, and they sent it off to lab even. I didn't have anything, Mike. I had nothing. I can't believe you But you had it. it. Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's talk about that. <laughs> if, if you had chlamydia, I'd be concerned if I were you. Yeah. Uh, if he had chlamydia, I think this conversation would be leaning a little the other way. Uh, but we actually have a breakdown of how this actually happened. You went to the doctor on the 3rd. Correct. And you asked to be treated you, you asked to be checked, see if you had Correct. an STD. Correct. Okay, and y here's what you told the doctor. I have excerpts from the doctor's note. He claims wife is sleeping with multiple partners. Claims she has an STD. He has no rash or lesion. He has some mild discharge of the urethra. He preferred not to do the DNA testing due to expense. That's a lie. He was treated preventatively. 
That's a lie, too. So you went to the doctor. You were never diagnosed with chlamydia. Not by paperwork. <laughs> Other than his handwriting, because he played me. He played you? Yeah, he played me. Why would he do that, Mike? Because this is the manipulative person she is. So she got to your doctor. I believe so. Bribed him. That's right. OK, then this is on the third. That's correct. OK, but he treated you for it because you had it. That's correct. <laughs> OK, then you went and got tested for it. Yes, I did. On the fifth. Yes, I did. And you tested negative. Yes, I did. So you did take the test. I did take the test. You didn't take the test. <laughs> she took the test. You weren't diagnosed with it. She was tested and didn't have it. Now, Mike, look at me. I mean, okay. you, you can look at her and okay. shake no. your head in okay. disbelief I'm, that I'm there's some right JFK level conspiracy here okay. to cover up chlamydia. You didn't get tested for chlamydia. There's no lab test for oh, chlamydia that, that you took. I understand took. that. This doctor's lying to me on a tape recorder also that he didn't call my wife. This doctor okay. asked You're me, the Dr. one Phil, that gave us the note. No. You gave us the note. He preferred not to do DNA testing due to expense. You gave us the note. Why would you give me a bogus note? I did not. That's all that doctor would give me. I even confronted mm -hmm. him that he tr treated me preventively on that, that audio tape I sent you. And he told me I had it 100% on that audio tape that he treated me for. All he did is showed me the Jim, microscope. Where's the audio tape? I gave it to your company. You did not give it to my company because when you showed up here looking for me, you went to two other lots in town, not where I right. tape. You found I didn't now have that, that tape then. Right. You, I sent that recently on this go around. You sent it recently. Yes. To to Matt and Stacy and all of them. To your producers. I, I mean, I if we've got it, we'll play it. And, and this doctor, if he's lying and saying all of this. And it's not true, boy, you ought to complain Doc, about him. I'm not, I'm not worried about it one bit. I am complaining about this doctor. Yeah. I can tell you that I, I, have, I have talked to every member of this production team. You didn't send them a tape. CBS Security remembers you very specifically. I understand that. And <laughs> say, he gave us nothing. And head of security where is my at CBS. Where, where is my stuff I dropped off? I'm not, I, I dropped it off here. Security says the next day the police didn't give it to them. The police are looking right across the parking lot at them, and they didn't give it to me. So at that point, I was a Where's my stuff I brought out here? OK, you're starting to make me think that you're losing touch with no. reality. No, Here's the note you yes. provided from your doctor. Yes, we sir. have this. <laughs> you did not test positive for chlamydia, true or false? Did you or did no, you not take the test? No, because he only put it on a paperwork, and he didn't offer did to test me. You, he just no, told me to bend over. No. Did you, did you or did you not take the test for chlamydia? No, I did not. OK. Did you not come out here and tell me that you had chlamydia? Yes, I did. But you didn't take the test to diagnose chlamydia? No, I didn't. I took this doctor's word. OK. You didn't take the test. You were offered to test, but you didn't take I the test. I wasn't offered to test, sir. Preferred not to take the DNA testing due to expense. Sir, this is a doctor, after he treated me, looked me in the face and asked me, what name do you want on this file? I said, I want my name on this file if you want to know the true words. I have nothing to hide. Well, she's just going to blame it on you in court. I said, I don't give a I know the truth. I have not been with anybody. And I walked out of his office to the elevator and started crying. And I said, no, he's given me a note. OK. You did take the test for chlamydia. I did. Negative. It came out negative, and he sent it to a lab to be tested as well. Because I wanted to know 100% that I had nothing. OK. So is Cindy cheating on Mike? Should he be concerned? We'll talk about that and the extreme measures that he takes to spy on her when we come back. Cindy is a sociopath.
I know she's cheated on me. I have spied on her, audio taped her, videotaped her. He would go and hide in the woods and spy on me all day. I've parked in the yard just behind some server. I don't ever hit you, but I want to so bad. If you were a man, I'd smash you in the ground right now. Yeah, but I'm scared to tape myself, ain't I? You need to go. That was home video of yet another fight uh, between Mike and Cindy. And I say between Mike and Cindy, uh, it's not really a fight between Mike and Cindy, it's Mike yelling at Cindy. Cindy says Mike gets crazy with jealousy to the point where he has gone off the deep end, spying on her, forcing her to prove her innocence. Cindy says she has done everything under the sun to prove she hasn't cheated on Mike, but he just won't believe her. Mike insists he has proof of Cindy's infidelity, and he wants a confession from her today. Take a look. My husband, Mike, is absolutely convinced that I have cheated on him multiple times with many different people. Cindy is a sociopath, a compulsive liar. I know she's cheated on me. I'm not stupid. I know what's going on. Since being married to Mike, I have never cheated on him, ever. Two and a half years ago, I told my husband a white lie. Once I found out she lied to me, I knew I couldn't trust her. Ever since I told Mike this white lie, he's questioned every move I made. He's made my life a living nightmare. In order to catch Cindy in her lies, I have spied on her. I have audio taped her. I have videotaped her. Mike, I'm not lying. Oh, them... I'm not lying. I never cheated on you. Mike would pretend like he would go to work, and he would go and hide in the woods and spy on me all day. I haven't hidden in the woods. I've parked in the yard just behind some shrubbery and trees. He would hide in our house. He would follow me to work. He recorded my conversations to know who I was talking to. I'm just doing it because I want to get to the bottom of it. I feel like a prisoner in my own home. Mike said I gave him an STD. The doctor said I had chlamydia. When I went to the doctor, my results were clean. I know Cindy gave it to me. With Mike, I'm guilty until proven innocent. Mike hired a detective to give me a polygraph test. I took the test and I passed it. There was no deception. Mike said I was able to pass the test because I was a habitual liar and that habitual liars could pass the test. Mike even started to question whether or not our son was his. He said he didn't look like him, so he wanted me to take a paternity test to prove that he was his son. The results came back that Mike is his father. Mike has turned our son against me. No, so she manipulated me like five times. Okay, I hate son, him. that is so your dad talking. My husband has told our 12-year-old son that I have slept with many men and that it's been going on for some time. I haven't turned my son against Cindy. I actually tell my son that I think mom has a sickness. She's very sick. A month ago, I left Mike and my son, and I moved out. I was at my wit's end. I could forgive Cindy for what she has done, but I cannot forgive her if she doesn't come clean. I've been telling him the truth all along, and this has destroyed our family. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. I feel like I've done everything I possibly can, and just, I can't make him believe me. OK, so you hired a PI. Yes, sir. And you had her take a polygraph. Yes, sir. Why'd you have her take a polygraph? Because I wanted to know if she could pass one, if she, want, if she was uh, lying to me. I mean, that's what they're for. I wanted to see if right. she was lying to me. And so she passed it? Well, the results showed she passed it, but I knew she flunked one of the questions. Well, let, let me see the report. I don't have a report. It's just my <laughs> word. It's okay. something that happened in our lives we both know about, and that's the problem with this whole situation. OK, you asked her to take a polygraph. Yes. Because you wanted to know if she would pass it. Correct. She did. Then you said, well, you passed it just because you're such a good liar. Do you notice a pattern that you make accusations, mm -hmm. and then when somebody rational comes along with science and says, didn't happen, then you go, oh, well, there's a conspiracy. I mean, do you notice that pattern in your own behavior? Sure, that's what it looks like. It, that's no, what a it's not what it looks does. like. No, that's that, what a no, manipulator no, does. No, I, I, listen, I, understand. I, I don't have a horse in this race. I know. So I understand, sir. It's, I, I have no investment in whether she's cheating on you or whether she's not. Right. I, I tell you, I agreed to do this story for one reason. It's because y'all have a child mm -hmm. that I think is really caught in the middle of some real chaos here. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. But you had her take a polygraph and she passed it, then you say, well, that doesn't count. 
Uh, you, sh you search her things, you search her car, you've interrogated her exes, her friends, her co-workers, uh, you've recorded her phone conversations. You have hidden cameras in the home. No, no cameras in the home. No cameras in the home? Other than my phone towards the end there, no cameras do, in the home. Do you spy on her from the woods? I, no, not from the woods, from my garage. <laughs> from the garage. You, you hide in the house sometimes to watch her. No, I didn't hide in the house, house. The house huh? to watch her. Snuck in the house before. I have stayed in the home <clears> after <throat> she there. went to work and listened to some phone conversations that she's had when she came in. And you Do really you park down the street and spy on her? No, we, we live out in the country. I don't park down well, the street. You just said in the tape piece in that you yard. sit in your car behind yeah, the bushes. Yeah, but not down the street. Is I'm answering your direct question. So you sit in your car and spy on her from behind the bushes? No, in I go to the garage all the time. I just park there. Okay. It's you searched your phone records. Yes. And you call every number you don't know. No, I don't you call, call every up. number. But I did in the, in the first phone bill she hid from me. Correct. I, I made phone calls. You, off you it. called them all, and you don't just call and say, uh, "Hi, I'm sorry, I'm not sure who this is." You actually interrogate them. You have an affair with my wife or something? You. I just told them what I, the suspicion I had, and I wanted to know who it was. <laughs> I didn't interrogate. But you tell I didn't them. So you called them. everybody on the phone bill on that page of that phone bill. Not said everybody. You had suspicions of your wife. No, not everybody. Well, you called one of your clients. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You didn't know it was a client when you no, called, right? No, I didn't. No, sir. And you're talking to this client about, Correct. well, I'm suspicious that my wife is having an affair on me. Does that seem reasonable? No, it doesn't. That you call people no. you don't even know and defame her and slander her no. and put her in a bad light, even to the point of embarrassing yourself by calling a Correct. client? I don't understand why you had to lie about it. Because every time she tells you something that isn't involved in your ego and focused entirely on you, you go away. That's not true. She lied about an office party. Your definition of she lied about an office party is she told you she found out about it a few days later than she did. Correct. Okay, and let me tell you something. People lie, particularly white lies, sometimes to escape all of the hell that you're raining down on her. This is ridiculous. It's all right. Listen, no, you, listen. I, I'm not some doctor that's a thousand miles away from here in St. Louis. I'm right here. I you can't that. blow me off I'm with a condescending to, roll of your eyes. I'm not trying to Because I'll off. debate with you whatever point you want to okay. debate because you're telling me that she didn't tell you about a party until a couple of days later than she found out about. What she told you is when she found out versus when she found out. Okay? So I'll alert the media. Big deal. <laughs> that is not exactly a reason you hide in the bushes and scream and yell at your wife every time you open your mouth. You're out of control. I was out of control during this. Session. I was out of control during this. What was this party? Was this some big drunken sex party in <laughs> some penthouse no. in New York or something? No. What was it? It was just a, a group of people getting together at a restaurant bar. I was there two hours and I came home. That was it. Right. But why don't, I don't understand why you had to lie about it. I just told you why. <laughs> Did, no, listen. I even asked to go. No, listen. I Look, hey, eye contact go. here. Eye contact. Okay. Yes, that's important. I just to told me. you why. Okay? You said, why do you have to lie to me about it? Because every time she tells you something that isn't involved in your ego and focused entirely on you, you go away. That's not true. <laughs> Okay, so what have you seen as you are spying on her in the house? What'd you catch her doing? I mean, how many men have you caught her with? Oh, I haven't caught her with any men. <laughs> None? No, I just caught her hiding notes and stuff that I did, that, that, no, you know, No, 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 no. You weren't looking you for me. notes, you were looking for men. No, I was looking for anything I could get. Okay, what'd you see through the window? What I saw her through the window was her trying to find if the house was bugged still and pulling out furniture and stuff. At one point. <laughs> I'd, I'd tear that some bitch down to the studs if I were you. So once he looked through the window, caught you in there reading the Bible. 
He did catch me doing a Bible you study. You harlot. <laughs> <laughs> you caught her reading the Bible. I don't remember catching her reading the Bible. I imagine you don't. No, I don't. Because <laughs> that doesn't support chlamydia. <laughs> okay, so you've never caught her with another man? No, sir. Other than when we weren't married. Well, I was living with her. This is a woman that was cheating on me in my past, slamming me daily on me meeting people, and she carries this for 28 years and bashed me the whole time over these 28 years and held this inside. Yeah, you seem like a real victim. Yeah. Um, and you are certainly bashable. With I your understand behavior. that for with my I mean, behavior. Your, your, I, I your take behavior full, is I, just outrageous here. I take full control ha, are, of that. Have you cheated on him since y'all got married? No, not since we've been married. When We've known each other. I think I was 13, he was 14. We have a long history. And when I we were it feels younger, really long sometimes. <laughs> oh, this I'll last two and a half years just seemed like a life. Try 32 <laughs> years of it. Mike. It's so wrong. No, it's not. I know who I, I am. I made a Always mistake when I was 18 years old, okay? I did cheat on you. I admitted that. Okay, when I you were We split that. up. I was probably about 18. Okay, I When y'all split that. up? We, no, we were together at the time. We weren't married. We lived together. And I made a mistake. Okay. You when made you were 18? I shouldn't be paying for that. I'm 48 okay, years old. Okay, let me answer that. You made a mistake, okay? <laughs> you made a mistake. I did. And then... With you making that mistake, you blame me for that for 32 years. I named my own son after the son of a bitch. And you allowed that. I, Mike, that wasn't going through my Cindy, head when we had our kids. Why did you, why did you lie to my family all these years? About what? About everything. Why doesn't my son, why did he come to me and ask me at age six if I'm going to kill you? Oh, boy, am I going to answer oh that. God. Oh, boy. My son did not see these accusations all these years. He did not see this. Next, we're going to talk about Mike's desperate act that he had everyone in a panic. We're going to find out what he did as a trick to test his wife. We'll be right back. I told Cindy, I could put this gun in my mouth and blow my brains out. You still wouldn't talk. I was scared. I didn't know if he was going to shoot me, if he was going to shoot himself. Mike has fake attempted suicide twice. The first time, he held a rifle in his mouth and told me that if I didn't tell him who I'd slept with, that he would pull the trigger. I told Cindy, I could put this gun in my mouth and blow my brains out. You still wouldn't talk. I was scared. I didn't know if he was going to shoot me, if he was going to shoot himself. The second time, Mike grabbed a bottle of pills and pretended to take the whole bottle in front of our son. My son was crying, screaming, and begging, Dad, please don't do this. And I stood over Cindy, and I yelled out twice, you that son of a bitch. And Mike said, your mom doesn't care about me. She doesn't want to tell me the truth. She'd rather me die first. Well, Mike has gone to another extreme measure to prove his wife, Cindy, doesn't care about him. And it was a fake suicide attempt. And you did this in front of your son. Oh. What the hell were you thinking? I was thinking irrational at the time is what I was doing. Oh. It was a spare the moment thing. You, you did this in front of your son. <laughs> wow. And you did it to test whether Her. she cared about you. Yes, sir. And what'd you learn? She didn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> she didn't care about you because? She wasn't going to open up and bring out this secret oh. she's been carrying all these years. Yeah. Why did you lay on the floor? Why did you say I jerked you off the couch by your hair on the floor? No, I didn't. I grabbed your hand, and I didn't even grab your hand. I said, let's go out on the deck and talk. That's what happened, and you just dropped to the floor. No, I didn't, You Michael. just dropped to the floor and started screaming. It is a lie. You grabbed me by oh. my arm and my hair. I'm having a video of you dropping down to the floor. I'm just no, because I'm don't. screaming. 
Hell, I feel like dropping to the floor now. Uh, you say that he hid all of the phones in your purse so you couldn't call 911. Yes, he did. That is correct. Okay, so you hide all the phones, you hide her purse so she can't call 911. Then in front of your son and her, you fake a suicide yes, attempt. Sir. And this seems logical to you? No, it doesn't. None of this does. My whole life doesn't seem logical to me, the way it's gone. She says, you yelled at your son, your mom would rather see me die than tell me the truth. No, I didn't yell that at her. I told him that. I didn't yell it. I did say the words, though. I said the words. Yes, I did. To your son? Yes, sir. Okay, so you, the volume's turned down, but the words are the same. Yes, sir. Does that seem reasonable to you? None of this Do does. you think you're involving your child in adult issues? Yes. Do you think you're alienating your son from his mother? Yes. No, I'm not alienating my son from his mother. I don't keep my son from his mother. That's his choice. I ask my son every day, does he want to see mother? Does he want mother to come home? Does he want to talk to her? Have, no, he says no. I have he doesn't want her back. I have heard recently, but he has told his kids so much so many things that he I doesn't have told know what my to kid, think. What it's happened in the, matters. let's go back to the lie about the party, it's Cindy. It's like a 10 year Why? old. Why? Why? Wait a minute, no, 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 no. This ain't gonna happen this way. Why would you drag out that little, little lie about a party for three weeks and I go to jail because I give up my own marijuana because I, that one week, that one week of taping you told me my whole life story. Why would you let that little, that little lie drag out and let that kid go through that every night? You drug this, you drug this kid into this. You cannot blame you me for your choices. It. No, I'm not blaming you for nothing I've done. You are blaming me. I'm taking me. the blame, and I'll own up to it like I have all my life. I have blamed myself all my life for your problems. It ain't going to happen no more. I want to get to the bottom of it. Let's talk about the truth. First trick I played on your mom early on. It was late at night. You were in bed. If there is a person in this audience that believes that was an appropriate exchange between a father and a son, then somewhere a village is missing their idiots. <laughs> Audio recordings of conversations he's had with his son. Now, Mike sent these to us. Mike, this Mike right here sent us these tapes of his conversations with his son. Let's have a look. All I need is that doctor's excuse. He got it too, buddy. What, what? The doctor's excuse, Daddy, got to prove that I got treated for a disease. <laughs> oh, the best move I ever made, buddy. First trick I played on your mom early on. It was late at night. You were in bed. Your mom started following me and bickering and bickering. And she waited till I had a gun in my hand. And mom went to grab the gun and it hit me in the tooth. No, it by wasn't it, in my mouth. It was by it. Mind. But when she hit it, pushed it into my face and hit it. Mom, you think he's that stupid to lay the ammo on a gun? No, I knew better, bud. I handle guns all the time. She wants to go leave and go sleep at a rest stop. Well, if she's going to leave, why doesn't she just get out and go stay somewhere then? Why don't we just lock her out? I can't. I can't. She is going to disturb Get out! <laughs> okay, listening to that back, give me your evaluation of your parental conduct in that exchange my son deserves to know the truth who his father's been all these years this this woman has made him to believe that I didn't care or love him all his life no self-esteem she did everything for him we had conversations about it I told her I you cannot do these son. things for a kid <laughs> you can't Sleep with him till he's 10. You can't I give can't him a shower him till, he's till he's 10. He's 10. The did. kid couldn't even tie his own shoes till he was 10. <laughs> Why wouldn't you take our son to the doctors and get him glasses and let him drag it out for five years? It wasn't five years. Why five would you do these half. things to a kid? <laughs> Why would you say to him in front of me and to my family every day of his life, damn near, that dad only cares about himself when all I was out was doing was providing? and I've got nothing in return. I, you no, didn't don't, want it. Don't, don't respond to that. Uh, I want to go through this exchange, and then I want you to answer my question, and instead of giving a 4th of July speech, 
All right, let's listen to this. All I need is that doctor's excuse. He's got it too, buddy. What, what? The doctor's excuse, Daddy, got to prove that I got treated for a disease. Hey, stop. Now, let me ask you something. First off, that is completely inaccurate, but we've already visited that. What is your purpose in coming home excitedly, bubblingly, sharing this with your 12-year-old son? I need He's, it, I got it, buddy, I got he it. Needs, Whoa, I he got it. He wants to know. He wanted to know. He wanted me to take a polygraph test. He wanted to know the truth. So your justification for coming home and having that conversation with your adolescent son is because he wanted the truth. I don't think I come home bubbly to tell him. I don't think there was, I think there Roll was, it back, Will. No, I hear that. I I roll understand. it back. I want to hear it again. <laughs> roll it back as many times as you want. All I need is that doctor's excuse. He's got it too, buddy. What, what? The doctor's excuse, Daddy, got to prove that I got treated for a disease. Stop. Are you telling me you're not coming home saying, we got her now, buddy. I, oh, oh, Daddy did it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yes, he wanted to know. That tells me, A, you had prior conversation with him about it because you're coming home saying, I got what we talked about. I went and got it. I went to a doctor and I got an excuse. The excuse that I have right here, which says you didn't take the damn test. He gave you preventative meds for the disease, which the CDC said. So you came home and lied to your boy. No, I didn't you came lie home to my, and I lied to your boy. To my boy. You lied to him then. I don't lie to my you boy. You lied to him then. No, only because that paperwork and that doctor covered it up. <laughs> I can look you straight in the eyes and say that too. That's what worries me. Because <laughs> I think your capacity for insight is very, very low. Because I'll tell you, if there is a person in this audience that believes that was an appropriate exchange between a father and a son, then somewhere a village is missing their idiot. <laughs> Where, where's, the, where's the appropriate case of my boy cussing my mother out, his mother out? Why wouldn't he? Where is, look what he where is sees. that at? Her manipulating him and trying to leave. Look what he sees, Mike. He didn't see this he all his life. Treat and he treat me like this. And he would, he would own he? up to that. He didn't see this all his life. For he saw this the last and two and a half years. years. You damn horrible. right he did. <laughs> horrible. Mike, um, yes, sir. your conduct with your son is nothing short of abusive. It's inappropriate, it's manipulative, it's alienating of his mother, and it needs to stop. It's going to stop. And, and let me tell you something. I am a mandated reporter. I am required, if I see a child in what I believe to be imminent danger, I am mandated by law to report it to the Department of Child and Family Services or Child Protective Services. And, and we're either going to get a very specific plan to get you under control, or you're going to have a problem having access to that son because you are abusing the privilege. You're buddying up to him, which is a great no. popularity no. contest, but we have on tape him yelling and screaming at his mother, why don't you just leave? And as a father, allowing a son to speak to their mother in that way and in that tone is negligence. Their marriage is in trouble. I want her to confess right now of who you've been with. I wasn't with anyone, Michael. And dads involving their child. My son knows just about everything. In all their private problems. I know your freaking lives! Leave! Leave! 
I am very troubled by hearing this child scream at his mother. Things get so intense. She's manipulating the whole situation. She's turning this on me. I've tried to be your strength all your life, and you have done nothing but bash me. Dr. Phil stops the show. Robin, would you please come up and get Cindy? For a dramatic one-on-one. -on -one. That's tomorrow. Well, I've been talking with Mike and Cindy, and there is so much we've talked about, so much more we need to talk about. So we're going to continue this story tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Cindy and Mike about what I think needs to happen, and we're going to drill down on some more of what Mike says is the evidence he has that she is the problem. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.